Good morning to Kentucky hosting Georgia last night. Florida lost earlier in the day yesterday, putting the Wildcats tied in first place with the Gators. A win last night over the Georgia Bulldogs, and they would be bowl eligible for the first time since 2010 and in sole possession of first place in the SEC East. Mark Stoops and company with a chance to move into first place in that East Division. But the Bulldogs struck first. Jacob Beeson completes his pass over the middle to Isaiah McKenzie. Turn it on the Jets. 38 yards untouched. 7 0 Georgia Bulldogs. Cats answer though with a nice drive. Boom Williams. Ping pong. Boom. Get off me. All the way down inside the Georgia five boom would be hurt on this play, but would later return to the game. So how does Kentucky cap it off? Well, they cap it off with their freshman, their tough running back freshman, Benny Snell Jr. Game tied at seven. Second quarter Bulldogs going long. Easton off the play fake. Javen Wims 51 yards on the hook up there. That led to a field goal 10 seven Georgia. How about a punt and how about a Marcus McWilson hit stick? McKenzie just gets popped there and pops the ball loose. Wildcats ball in Georgia territory, and that play led to this. Williams back at it. Boing, boing. Touchdown, Kentucky. Yeah, Boom's got a little bit of swag. Of course, he was hurt just a little bit ago, but I told you he returned, and that's his second touchdown of the night. Georgia, though, adds a field goal before the half. Rodrigo Blankenship, 42-yarder. Real good. Cats led 14-13 at the halftime break. Third quarter, Benny Snow Jr. One yard touchdown run. He's in, he's in. It's all good. Snow went for 114 yards on 21 carries. Two touchdowns, including that one right there. 21-13 Cats. Back come the dogs. Mid fourth quarter, Sony Michelle. He's in. They go for two. They get it. Georgia goes up a field goal. 24-21. Kentucky kicks a field goal to tie the game late. But Georgia marches 67 yards downfield, chews up the last 247 on the clock. Blankenship kicks that 25 yarder to win it, and Kentucky falls on a last second field goal 27 24 inside Commonwealth Stadium last night. So the Wildcats drop to 5 and 4 on the season. Mark Stoops now. Uh, the hearts and our minds are in the right place. We had a really good preparation all week, and uh, I really didn't feel like we had an edge about us today, though. I just didn't like. Um, just a certain look in our eye. I think our players wanted it to happen, and uh, I don't know. I just got to do a better job of uh, getting them to play with that mentality and that edge and that urgency that it takes, in particular, defensively. Boston College hosting number seven Louisville Heisman front runner Lamar Jackson was off and running quick. Third play of the game, Lamar Jackson is gone. 69 yards. They do a little time there. Why not? Next time around, he's going to the air. James Quick, where you at? I'm wide open. 30 yard touchdown pass. 14 nothing cards under a minute to go in the first quarter. Jackson. How about a third first quarter touchdown? Hooking it up with Jalen Smith. 44 yarder. We flash forward to the third quarter. Now 45 seven Lamar Jackson. He is doing it, doing it and doing it well. 53. Seven touchdowns in the day, four throwing, three running for Lamar. Those are called style points, folks. Third game this season, Jackson has been responsible for six plus touchdowns. Louisville wins 52 to seven over Boston College. Unranked Tennessee coming off a loss to unranked South Carolina and hosting unranked Tennessee Tech. First quarter, Joshua Dobbs to the air to Josh Malone. He's wide open, easy, 30 yards. Seven nothing balls. Nice catch by number three. Number four is off and running. Look at number four go. Look at the focus in his eyes. John Kelly, 73 yard touchdown, 21 nothing Tennessee. Dobbs looked great passing, of course, 12 of 13, three touchdowns, including that one right there to Juwan Jennings. 55 nothing win over tennis for Tennessee over Tennessee Tech. All right, now to the local level. Union head football coach Zach Willis resigned from the program. This came down before yesterday's game against Bluefield. I was told he was suspended and then decided to quit. Willis was in the, his third year of coaching at Union, a 6-23 and record overall. Four of those wins this season. Assistant coach Andre Lynn will take over as the interim head coach of the Bulldogs. They won 7 to nothing 
versus Bluefield, Virginia yesterday. So now five and five of the season. So interim coach got his first dub last night that will close out the regular season next week at home versus Faulkner. Oh, they and by the way, they scored yesterday with just 15 seconds left in the game. So they went at seven to nothing. Crazy stuff there. Now to the wise guys. UVA wise held its senior day yesterday and what a year it has been for these guys with six wins already this season. The group has elevated the program to its first winning season since 2008. Senior Zach uh, Chris Flood, I should say, Zach Blair and Alvin Inero being some of them. Cavs get on the board first with a field goal, 21 yarder. 3 0 in the first quarter. Knights turn. Ryan Deal looking, looking. Whoops. Ball's tipped and into the hands of Tevin McLeave. He's got the interception. Cavs down at the midfield mark. Then they capitalize with the 13 yard touchdown pass. Jeremy Eubank to Jacob Cousins. Eubank to Cousins. 10 0 wise, however. Yeah, that would be all the scoring they would do. Wesleyan would score 35 unanswered points. You see the wise quarterbacks combined just 15 of 37 passing for 95 yards. The Cavaliers will close out the regular season Thursday in Charleston, West Virginia. Cool record broken yesterday by wise senior linebacker Zachary Blair. He had one tackle for loss and it marked his 77 and a half tackle for loss in his career. A new NCAA Division II record. Also before the game, Oh, heart wipe. You know what's coming. Place kicker Trent Martin proposed to his girlfriend. She said yes. Player reaction, go. Yeah, she said yes. Good stuff there. Martin is a senior from Virginia Beach, Virginia. Time for a great big hug. Hashtag, aw. You Pike hosting Kentucky Christian. Bears up 14-7 at the half. Al Holler Jr. ready to go. Third quarter, Knights ball. Pass complete. However... Jackson Mead says, give me that football. Strips it out. And then fourth down, Willie McLeod. He tried to punch it in there. Can't break it in, though. Uh, Knight's ball. However, the very next play, they will get in. Ball is tipped, picked. Derek Harris for the touchdown. The Bears would go on to win it 30-19. to Georgetown looking to stop a two-game losing skid, hosting the University of Cumberland's first quarter. Cumberland's in Georgetown territory. Seth Burke. He gone airborne. Whee! Seven other Patriots. However, the score would spark Georgetown's defense as they come up with a big stop on fourth down. No score in there for the Pats. Then a little later on, it's Georgetown's J.J. Jude, the former Johnson Central Golden Eagle, busting it loose for about a 20-yard gain. They kept the tempo going all day long, and, well, Cumberland's Falls on the road 31-7 to to the Georgetown Tigers. By the way, we had to show you this. Vanderbilt-Auburn yesterday, Daniel Carlson, all right, he's lining up for a field goal. But the kick is, whoop, blocked. Zach Cunningham, did you see him just jump over the center? Well, if you didn't, we're taking another look here. Zach Cunningham, you got to love it. Jumps over the center, times the snap, perfect, and blocks the kick. Fantastic play. Auburn would go on. Uh, to win it 23 to 16, but what a play by Vanderbilt's Zach Cunningham. Now to basketball. Kentucky will play its second and final exhibition game tonight at Rupp. The Asbury Eagles will get a chance to play a college basketball powerhouse just like Clarion did last Sunday, and that was not good for Clarion because the Cats ran up and down the floor through oops and lobs all day long, including that one to Derek Willis. Uh, John Calipari looks at these scrimmages and tries to figure out how to group his guys together and to get a good feel on how uh, who he will go with to open the regular season this coming Friday night. Cal goes straight to numbers and analytics. The greatest thing, the rebound attempts on offense and defense, who do you think was by far the leader in rebound attempts? Basketball bennies. Yeah, wasn't close. And I'm able to say that's why he will play. So he goes 100% of the time, which is an outrageous number. And you would think in that game he wouldn't because of who we played. He does. That means you play. That's an effort thing. Um, assist to turnover, um, deflections, those things. We keep track of all that. And it's all just effort stuff. All right, tonight at Rupp Arena, Kentucky plays its second and final exhibition game. The Asbury Eagles will take the 20-minute drive up north to Lexington, Kentucky. It's a 7 o'clock tip time on the SEC Network. And, of course, we'll have highlights and post-game reaction right here on WYMT. Tough loss for the Kentucky football cats last night, but no worries. They go to Knoxville, then they'll come back home. They'll play Austin B, probably get that sixth win that they need to become bowl eligible. And then, of course, it's on to Louisville to close out the season. So. 
Good stuff. Great, great game last night inside Commonwealth Stadium. Nothing you can do about it. They tried extremely hard for that win. That's a look at sports this morning. Enjoy your morning.